This is a crash site of a rocket that China launched in June 2024. The latest of many boosters to fall dangerously close to Chinese villages. This is the first stage of a Long March rocket, a family of rockets that has been the workhorse of the Chinese Space Agency. The West's attention is usually firmly fixed on the activity of NASA and the European Space Agency. But strange incidents in the Chinese space program have drawn curious eyes over the years. Rockets falling from the sky, landing on populated areas, spewing nightmarish orange toxic gas. But these are no accidents. These first stage rockets are falling on Chinese soil by design. While these stories grab our attention, China has been quietly building its space program, launching its own space station, beating the US to the lunar south pole, and landing a rover on Mars. Most people in the West have no idea what's going on in the Chinese space program, a program full of successes and dubious engineering decisions. So what on earth is China doing? The weirdness of the Chinese space program starts with where they launched their rockets from. China has geography on their side when picking a launch location. Launching east from their southeastern coastline would benefit from a launch velocity boost and allow them to safely land rocket stages in the Pacific Ocean. However, this is not where China launches most of its rockets from. Its most active port, the Xichang Satellite Launch Center, is nestled in the middle of a mountainous region in the center of China. Why on earth would a country with an extensive coastline choose to launch from the very center of the country? The answer is actually quite simple, to protect them from attack. These launch facilities initially served as military bases for testing missiles. Placing the launch facilities in the center of the country placed them further from borders and further from their adversaries. To take advantage of Earth's rotation, rockets launched towards the east. Unfortunately, the region just east of Xichang is dotted with small villages. So every launch puts Chinese villagers at risk from falling rocket stages. This has consequences. In 1996, the US hired the Chinese Space Agency to launch a telecommunication satellite. It launched from the Xichang port atop a Long March 3B. Immediately after liftoff, being fed by a faulty inertial measurement unit, the rocket veered off course and tragically crashed into a village near the launch site. The Chinese government reported six direct casualties, but this number has been questioned. And beyond direct casualties caused by a massive bomb falling from the sky, these crashes pose long-term health hazards to these communities. The early versions of the Long March rocket, which are still being launched, use hydrazine-based hypergolic propellants, which are extremely toxic. Hypergolic fuels are commonly used in rocket propulsion due to their unique properties. They ignite spontaneously upon contact with an oxidizer, eliminating the need for an external ignition source, which provides reliable ignition, which is a huge advantage, especially for on-orbit maneuvering. They also stay liquid at hotter temperatures, allowing them to be stored over longer periods, making them perfect for longer on-orbit missions. The Space Shuttle's orbital maneuvering system and smaller reaction control system used hypergolic propellants for this reason. But NASA was extremely cautious with this technology. Exclusion zones were placed around these thrusters for astronauts on spacewalks. And when the Space Shuttle landed, a massive fan was sometimes rolled out to help disperse any toxic chemicals as ground crews approached it. Long March rockets 1 through 4 use unsymmetrical dimethylhydrazine as fuel and nitrogen tetroxide as the oxidizer. This type of hydrazine is favored for its stability across a wide temperature range, making it easy to store. Nitrogen tetroxide is also a common oxidizer due to its stable liquid state. It exists in equilibrium with nitrogen dioxide, which has a brown-orange tint. As temperatures rise, more nitrogen dioxide forms, giving the hot exhaust of Long March rockets their characteristic orange hue. When either the nitrogen tetroxide or nitrogen dioxide comes into contact with water, they produce nitric and nitrous acids, which destroy tissue. If you breathe them in, these acids damage the alveoli sacs in the lungs, which can either permanently scar your lungs or, if severe enough, kill you. The hydrazine fuel, on the other hand, is a proven carcinogen that is also incredibly reactive with metals. So, while the oxidizer is burning your lungs and skin, the fuel is giving you cancer. 
crop dusting your own citizens with these chemicals is the stuff of conspiracy theories. These are actual chemtrails. It's insane that China continues to do this when there are perfectly viable alternatives. To be fair to the Chinese government, they do the bare minimum. They alert the villages in the path of the falling rockets with the following advice. If you see any flying objects falling from the sky, please adjust your location quickly to avoid any harm. China's recklessness has made them a pariah in the international space community, and it doesn't stop with their own citizens. In 2007, China destroyed one of its own satellites using a missile, a clear showcase of their military power. In response, the United States passed the Wolf Amendment. This amendment forbade NASA from direct cooperation with the Chinese space program. This means the International Space Station, the pinnacle of cooperation between spacefaring nations, now excludes one of the world's superpowers. But this may well have just accelerated China's technological progress. China, not wanting to be left behind, began building their own space station. However, they couldn't build a space station without a human spaceflight program. So they started one. In 2011, they launched the Tiangan-1, a small 15 cubic meter space station intended to last two years as a prototype. It was crewed for only 20 days over two missions. But instead of deorbiting in 2013 as planned, it remained in orbit for another five years to test its component's longevity. Next, Qinggong-2 was launched in 2016, testing refueling, cargo transfer, and scientific experiments, paving the way for a permanently manned station. Qinggong-2 was deorbited in 2019. With refueling techniques proven and multiple crewed missions completed, China built their own permanently crewed space station, Qinggong. Between April 2021 and October 2022, they constructed a three-module station. The station is about half the length and 40% the weight of the ISS. It features two robotic arms, one 10 meters long and the other 5 meters long, and they can connect to form a 15 meter long arm. To build the station, China built a new spaceport. The Wenchang station was built on an island in the south of China where rockets launch east into the Pacific Ocean. Along with this improvement, China also designed a new heavy lift rocket intended to decrease its dependence on hypergolic fuels, the Long March 5. Its main configuration is used to launch satellites into geosynchronous orbit. Its first stage uses a kerosene and liquid oxygen cycle, while its second stage uses a liquid hydrogen and oxygen cycle. With the help of four liquid oxygen and RP-1 boosters, the Long March 5 can take 14 tons up to geosynchronous orbit. But the problem comes from the Long March 5B, the low Earth orbit configuration. The 5B does not have a second stage to put objects in orbit. This means the core stage serves as the first and upper stages. Typically, the first stage of a rocket does not reach orbital velocity, and the smaller upper stage burns up during re-entry. However, because the Long March 5B has no upper stage, the entire 21 core stage needs to reach orbital velocity, and it stays there for days until drag from the upper atmosphere pulls it back down to Earth. Unlike small second stages that burn up, this large metal rocket does not, and it enters the atmosphere with zero control. This uncontrolled process needs global attention. Falling objects from space don't care about human borders. Between 2021 and 2022, three of these uncontrolled entries were needed to build the Qiangan space station. These re-entries are now the fourth, fifth, and sixth largest uncontrolled re-entries in history. They follow the Columbia re-entry, the Skylab deorbit, and the Salyut 7 deorbit. Debris from one re-entry landed in the Ivory Coast, and the latest re-entry resulted in France closing down the airspace over Corsica, and a number of European cities had to be alerted of potential falling debris. These rocket parts have a large area to fall into, and the probabilities that they hit a large dense area are pretty low, but simply letting 21 tons of spare parts land uncontrollably is a pretty irresponsible design choice. Or, as NASA's administrator put it, spacefaring nations must minimize the risks to people and property on Earth of re-entries of space objects and maximize transparency regarding those operations. While China has made some questionable choices in rocket design, their goals and achievements can't be ignored. 
They built their own positioning system in response to the US jamming a Chinese ship's GPS that was accused of carrying chemical weapon materials to Iran. Between 2000 and 2003, China sent four satellites to a geostationary orbit that covered only China. Then, when the European Space Agency pulled out of a positioning partnership out of fear that it would empower the Chinese military, China launched 65 more satellites between 2010 and 2020, making the Chinese constellation the largest global positioning constellation in orbit, twice the size of the USA's. And their system comes with a small upgrade that, in the hands of a totalitarian government seeking to collect data on its users, might ring some alarm bells. The satellites in the US global positioning system function with one-way communication. It simply sends out a signal that allows your phone to locate itself. The satellite does not know where your phone is. But China's system uses two-way communication that allows the satellite to identify your location. In good faith, this could be used to find a missing person's last location. In bad faith, it could be used to track an entire country's whereabouts. Currently, this is a vague threat. After all, GPS is not the only way governments can track you. But the idea that the Communist Party can secretly track GPS receivers using the two-way system was enough for the government of Taiwan to ban its use, especially for boats navigating the Taiwan Strait, fearing that China might use it to spy on their military bases. China has also launched landers to Mars, the Qianwen-1. On May 14th, 2021, the descent module placed the lander and rover on Martian soil, making China the first nation to successfully land a rover on Mars on its first attempt. They even included a detachable camera. After landing, the rover placed the camera on the ground and drove back to take this photo, like a good little Martian tourist, the rover's most significant discovery came from its ground-penetrating radar. It detected regularly shaped polygons 35 meters deep into the ground. These patterns could have formed by water undergoing freeze-thaw cycles, meaning the rover could have found evidence of ice water on Mars. The Chinese Space Agency has also built an incredibly successful lunar exploration program. Starting in 2007, they put two probes in orbit around the moon, Chang'e 1 and 2, which created a high-definition 3D map of the moon and tested tracking and communications. Chang'e 3 and 4 both landed rovers and made China the first country to explore the far side of the moon. Chang'e 5 and 6 returned lunar soil samples, with the latter returning the world's first samples from the far side of the moon. And China plans to eventually build a lunar research station. China is also learning from the US's newfound partnerships with private space industry, with 78 commercial space companies now operating in China. The static test that accidentally became a not-static test in early 2024 was conducted by one of these private companies, Space Pioneer. Despite the issues, China is making impressive progress, and if we learned anything from the past, competition between nations drives ambition. We don't receive a lot of news about China in the West, and when we do, it's usually presented with some level of Western bias. Even when a journalist is aware of their own bias, it's not always easy to eliminate it completely while working under time constraints. You may spend more time looking at data points that agree with your article's thesis. I had to check my own biases several times while writing this video weighing up whether it was worthwhile talking about China's global positioning system being a two-way communication system that has the potential to track its citizens, and deciding whether or not to balance that argument with examples of Western countries tracking their citizens. On that occasion, I decided my audience was intelligent enough to come to that conclusion by themselves, and it wasn't necessary to mention in a piece about the Chinese space program. The reason I included some positive developments about the Chinese space program was to achieve that balance. Writers are constantly making tiny decisions like this, whether they are aware of it or not, and that's why sometimes it's good for readers to be aware of trends in writing. Today's sponsor, Ground News, helps you do just that. Ground News is a website and app developed by a former NASA engineer on a mission to give readers an easy, data-driven, objective way to read the news. Every story comes with a quick, visual breakdown of the political bias, factuality, and ownership of the sources reporting, all backed by ratings from three independent news monitoring organizations. To see how Ground News works, let's look at the story about that static fire test that went wrong. 
Right away, you can see that 69 news outlets reported on this story. Of these, 36% lean left, while 33% lean right. Ground News also makes it easy to compare headlines to see how the biases might affect framing. On this occasion, the headlines are both pretty similar. Up here, we can click on the left, center and right tabs to get a quick synopsis of how the different sides are discussing the headline. The left stayed largely factual while mentioning other successes in the Chinese space program, while the right used dramatic language and footage of the accident. You can then choose a source to read more, and Ground News labels each source with political leaning, a factuality rating and who owns the news agency, giving you as much information as possible to contextualize the news you are consuming. Something I think we can all agree is something we need today more than ever. One of my favorite features is their blind spot feed, which shows you stories underreported by either side of the political spectrum. For example, if you lean right, you probably missed this story on George Bush's attorney general backing Kamala Harris. Ground News is a fantastic tool for sifting through the constant onslaught of misinformation and bias. They provide all the tools you need to be a critical thinker and I cannot recommend it enough. In fact, they are offering 40% off their Vantage subscription so you can get cheaper access. You can only access this discount through my link, so go to ground.news forward slash real engineering or click the link in the video description and support an independent news platform working to make the media landscape more transparent.